Hello and welcome back to the channel for another College Tier review. Today we'll be taking a look at the New Age Legendary Heroes H55 Hughes Warrior. You can get this guy over at Shozy Store. I think currently he is out of stock um, as I did pick him up a little bit late to get him on sale. Uh, but he'll probably re be restocked at some point so keep an eye out. And I'll leave a link to the previous release in the description to see that you can have it and have a sense of the price. Uh, great figure and we'll get right into the review. As always, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel to keep these reviews coming. So first take a look at the box. Typical New Age box, very G1 inspired. The cool image of him there on the side. Hughes on that side as well. And Hughes on this side from the episode where he does in fact show that he has a heart. Wonderful little episode. You can see very nice artwork on the box. You do get some instructions, which I have not actually opened because this guy is fairly straightforward to transform. Um, now I used to have pretty complicated new age figures, but their transformation actually is fairly intuitive once you get used to <laughs> the complicated aspects of the figure. And this guy is pretty small and pretty easy to transform. So before we get into all of the details and accessories, let's just take a look at the figure close up in robot mode, which is how he comes packaged. You can see some nice blue eyes there on the face. Nice paint there as well. Nice silver on the head crest. You can see cool paint on the crash plate there as well. Nice metallic red in his cartoon colors. Very nicely done. You can see the back cleans up very well as well. Pin joints and screws throughout with some die cast in there. You can see some die cast right there. Very, very nicely done figure. Not that much paint, but doesn't need it. Looks really, really good. In terms of articulation, he does have, his head can go the full 360. It is a bit difficult to get just because of his wings there, but nonetheless can be turned. Um, doesn't, it's not actually mounted on a ball joint, so you can't get looking side to side or anything. You could get him looking up by utilizing that joint, which we'll get to shortly, um, but that looks a little weird, obviously. So then his shoulders can go out to 90 on the hinge there, rotate, Full 360 around, he has no kibble, so nothing hinders the movement. Bicep rotation, nice past 90 degree bend out of the elbow there. And then we do get a little bit of wrist swivel, and you can pop these out, but he does not come with interchangeable hands. Um, then at the waist, we do have very good uncompromised full 360 waist rotation. Then he can crunch forward to about there. If you use transformation joint, you can actually get on crunching forward to a very de good degree there. And then he can crunch backwards as well, so you can have that going on. Then he does kick forward to about there. If you continue to move him back, you can get him kicking well past 90 there. And he can go back to about here. He doesn't kick back very far um, at all, actually, which is kind of interesting. You know, usually these new age figures have very good, well-rounded articulation, but at least on my copy, he does not kick back at all stays there, but I mean, you can get him obviously in a running pose, utilizing all of those joints there, plenty of joints. He can do more than a split, so very good out of that joint as well. Then he does have thigh rotation. He also has a knee rotation, oops, which is mainly for transformation, as you can see, it does kind of disengage things if you try to use it. He does have only a single bend at the knee, which, you know, through age figures, we are sometimes used to having that double bend, um, but it still gets to 90, plenty for how tiny this guy is. Then he does have, um, toe bend forward. He also has a heel bend and very good ankle rock. And you can see you could use that joint too if you wanted to. Um, but then you start disassembling him a little bit. So very well articulated little figure here and he is tiny. And I'll do some comparisons here in a moment but first let's take a look at the accessories he comes with. So the biggest one he does come with is his stand. Um, you can see it's trans transparent plastic there. Nice base, says New Age, um, and then you have multiple joints of articulation. So you have this one at the bottom, the one up here, and the peg on the top. Now, in case you're wondering, um, you could probably, I think, maybe switch this out for the seeker pin, but this does not work with, this uh, joint at the top does not work with seekers. So, nice base, and I think there are other plugs in here. You could plug in um, the, the peg into other holes or use other Bases. And so the way it integrates is you do have this slotted fitting there, which goes into a peg in an unfortunate location on the figure. You can just get them pegged in there and you can get them in like a 
flying pose if you want to, or just to support him, whatever you like. Um, you use the same joint when he is, that same pin when he's in jet mode, and it makes a little more sense there. Um, but you could get him in like a running or leaping pose, um, whatever you like. Then you also get two more accessories. So you do get his blaster, of course, and a very nice gray plastic, pretty simple, but well sculpted. Just hold that either hand, no problem. Looks very good. Then you do also get from the from the episode with um, where they go, they get shrunk and they go to that alien planet. I believe they get he has like this mask, kind of fake his identity sort of thing. I don't really remember that episode too well, but he comes with it nonetheless. So you just do just pull that head out, rotate the face around, facing the back, and you get an opening here for a square peg on that face mask. Does just slot in like that. So there you go. You can have that as well, if you so desire. Let's get his face back, because don't really need that mask on right now. For some size comparisons here, with, of course, obligatory, here's New Age David. Check out my review for him if you have not already. Fantastic figure. See how he stacks up there. And just for fun, we have Dr. Wu, their version of Power Glide. So, much smaller little figure, and all of these are... The, this guy is probably close to the size that G1. G1 might be a little bit taller, but around that size. So the amount of engineering that's packed into these very tiny little figures is quite impressive. Now, if you wanted to use that flight stand, and yeah, with Optimus, I think you have to use the Seeker peg as well, because he does have a little post there, um, but no pin. So, yeah, this is really a flight stand, as far as I know, pretty much specific for Power Glide. But you could put in a different arm if you wanted to. Let's get all these out of the way and get into transformation, which, like I said, is not that bad for a little new age figure. So to begin, um, if you wanted to, you could completely remove the hands as they are just pegged in and just have them off for robot mode if you or for jet mode if you wanted. But for this, I'm transforming them with them on. So I don't actually know what the instructions say, to be honest. I haven't used them. So you want to begin by rotating his his forearm out full 90 degrees, that reveals this little peg, which goes into the slot here. So it's just a matter of manipulating the arm over top of itself. Everything will overlap. I just peg that in to the underside of the wing and go ahead and detach the wing from the side of the body like that. Same thing on this side. So you just want to rotate the forearm. So you don't want to rotate the side panel, you want to rotate the forearm. That reveals that peg. And you just pull everything around, snap it in, and detach the wing from the side. Then I like to just go ahead and elongate the body here, just so you have that. And then also in robot mode, I did forget to really show it, but he does have a heart in there, um, as you saw in the picture for the video. So that is a fun touch. Um, but so coming down to the legs here, you wanna begin by detaching the engines from the side, and then they're on a slider joint. So you just wanna slide this backwards, like so, and rotate it around. Do the same thing on the other side. Just wanna open this up, slide that whole engine piece backwards, and rotate it around. And then this is just a series of leg rotations. So you wanna begin by, you also wanna rotate the waist. So let's go ahead and rotate at the waist, like that. Then rotate at the upper thigh joint, and also rotate at the knee joint as well. Now that red piece should be on the outside, and the back of the thigh should be facing the front. Next, make sure that engine is off to the side and you're just gonna articulate this top panel forward, bend it over, and you kinda wanna make sure it's splayed all the way up to the side. So that way you get the, this little section here should tuck underneath of his skirt like that. And then for the feet, there is some more rotation that goes on down here. So you wanna just go ahead and open up the tail, rotate at the ankle all the way around, then fold up, unfold, Tailpiece here, bring it all the way out, and then you can collapse that heel spur down and bring the tailpiece up, and that will form the whole rear tail of the aircraft. Do the same thing on the other side. So again, you want to rotate here at the upper thigh, rotate at the knee, and then go ahead and rotate here and tuck that underneath. Come to the leg here, or the foot, 
rotate all the way around. And it's pretty easy to see because it all, you know, you want the curve of the jet matching up on each side. Bring up the tail. And then finally, just you have two pegs on this leg and two slots on the other leg. And this, this joint is a little floppy on mine, um, but it is a screw joint, so you could just tighten the screw. Shouldn't be that hard of a fix. And it's also a transformation joint, which doesn't affect either mode, the stability of either mode. So there you have the rear section all done, and you can just push the engines on this double joint so they're all the way down, and then angle them really however you want. Now for the rest of the airplane here, you want to come to this section, detach it, flip it underneath, and then you have these little pegs here. You rotate inside, and that will clean up the side profile there as well. And you want to go ahead, begin collapsing everything here. So you want to collapse this up, and then you got two pegs here, which go into two slots, top of the wings. Go ahead and collapse that up, and then this will slot over top like that, and it really does help solidify the whole mode. Then come to the front here, and you just want to flip up this piece, and I'll see you actually, before you do that, you need to kind of detach that whole chest unit and start pulling it down. Now you can flip this section up, like so, and then you do get a slot here, which, or a peg here, that square peg, which goes into the rectangular slot there. Slot in like so, and then bring down the wings. And I do like how they're not on a rotation joint, so you don't have them rotating laterally. It's just up and down movement. And then finally, you could leave his face out like that if you want to replicate the G1 toy, or of course, like I showed before, rotate it inside and flip it down to have a more clean undercarriage there. And here we have Powerblade in his A10 Warthog inspired jet mode. Very cool. I always love Power Glide's character and his alt mode, you know, an Autobot that can actually fly and pretty awesome airplane at that. And you can see it looks pretty good, cleans up pretty well. The only complaint I would have is that these engines don't really slot in in any way. They're just kind of free to move, uh, but they still look pretty good. Everything else solidifies very nicely. You can see how the hands tuck up there. You could probably rotate the fists around more if you wanted to. Looks pretty darn good, in my opinion. Very nice airplane mode. And we'll get into some size comparisons. Here we have New Age Hughes in the middle, and then, of course, New Age David, or Optimus Prime, and the Doctor Wu rendition of Power Glide. So you can see how they stack up. So here we have Power Glide and Optimus. You can see Power Glide is a good bit shorter than Optimus which I mean for an A10 is not very accurate, but of course, you know, for a minibot and a scale was of no object in the original series, it works well enough. Very nice pair up there. And then here it just is for fun with the Dr. Wu Power Glide. Definitely check out my review of this guy as well. Really fun little figure. Just so you can see the size difference there. Very, very cool. And then setting these guys off to the side, bring in the flight stand here. Or I'll adjust the camera in a second so you can see him flying around. There you go. You can have Paraglide zooming around on the flight stand. You of course, like, angle them. Notice change position. Have them flying around, so. Pretty fun figure. I highly recommend them. Again, check out the link in the description to see I'm um, on Josie, and hopefully it'll come back in stock in the future for you to pick them up. Very nice figure. Um, probably available from other stores as well, but Josie is definitely my go-to. Highly recommend him. And I'll be uploading some more New Age reviews soon. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next review. See you then.